Hey, Merry Christmas to you, Alexander. Charles. Merry Christmas to you. Mr. Hepworth, Merry Christmas to you. He fills my heart with so much peace and joy. Amazing. My life feel brand new. He made my life feel brand new. Christmas to you. You love me too much, you. Hallelujah. Mm. You love me too much, you. Ah, my God. Oh, 
says monkey. Jesus love you too much. Jesus love you. Brother, Jesus loves you too much. Jephtha, because Jesus loves you too much. Jesus love you. Merry Christmas to you all. Christmas is all about enjoyment. It's about happiness. It's about bringing family together. Hey, too much. Christmas is not about controversy. <laughs> oh, it's about how God loves you. Hey, hey, Mr. Ponto. Long time. Oh, my my very good friend. Mr. Poncho, I used to like this man. 
I'm gonna give you he was a wonderful guy there. I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah, nigga cra. Yeah, nigga cra. Mr. Bonjo, yeah, yeah, nigga cra. Christmas day, yeah, nigga cra. Yeah, you remember that. Hi, good God bless you too, my brother. We just enjoying ourselves because Christmas is all about enjoyment. Christmas is all about happiness. Rejoice. If you have never been happy before, the only day you can rejoice and make merry is Christmas. Make merry. Merry yourself, brother. Oh, greetings from Colombia. Colombia, Ohio, or Colombia from Jamaica area. Hey. So today I'm going to talk about what Christmas has to offer us. What do you think Christmas has for us in South America? Okay, okay, God bless you. And you welcome to Hope of Glory Network Ministry. Today, 25th of Christmas Day. It's all about joy, enjoyment, being happy. So I'm going to talk about Christmas. A lot of people make theories, different theories of Christmas. That uh, some people ask like questions like, why do we celebrate Christmas? If you don't understand and you don't know why we celebrate Christmas, just shut up. Just keep up, keep your mouth shut. You understand? Just, just, just be quiet over there and let those who understand Christmas celebrate Christmas. Okay, really, is it Ohio? You from Ohio? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And uh, Odro, Beatrice, God bless you. And Merry Christmas to all of you. And Merry Christmas to every one of you. Like I'm saying, I'm going to talk about Christmas and the scripture reading from uh, Christmas is in the book of Luke. So you turn your Bibles to the book of Luke. And I'm going to give you some information i say information i'm going to give you some information about christmas because people keep on asking why do we celebrate christmas christmas is an idol worship christmas is pagan all kinds of unnecessary arguments all kinds of unnecessary arguments about christmas which is not necessary it is not necessary there is something that somebody said in the bible there was a blind man, a blind man that Jesus Christ healed him. He healed him of his blindness. And then the Pharisees asked, who healed you? Because they thought that day that his, he was healed was a, was a Sabbath day. So they questioned him about his healing. Ezebote, God bless you and Merry Christmas. So they tried to question this man of his healing. And you know, the man said, all that I know is that I was a blind man and now I can see. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you believe that? I say, all that I know before I was a blind man, but now I can see. That is very interesting statement from this guy. I know I was a blind man, but now I can see. Do you, can, do you believe you can see now? Were you a blind person and now you can see? Then you can give all glory to God. If you know you used to be a blind person and now you can see, then glory be to the Lord. And that is what this man told the Pharisees who wanted to question him of his healing. Sisters and brothers, so if somebody asks you or try to question you about your celebration of Christmas day. All you, all you got to tell the person that, look, all I know is that I was a sinner and, and Jesus Christ came to save me from my sins. All that I know that Jesus came to save me from my sins. Hallelujah. Let me just put on this music a little bit for you while I'm looking for something and I'll be right back. God richly bless you and remain blessed. 
remain blessed. Let's let's keep on listening to this one. Like this one. I'm coming. you all. Abinejra. God bless you. Okay. I am trying to uh, just put in this introduction scripture before I come on. Now, uh, John chapter 9. This is about a blind man who received his sight. A blind man who received his sight. Look at the conversation. It goes like this and from verse number 19. The Pharisees tried to question him. They try to question him. So maybe uh, let's try to read it from the accounts of the Pharisees. Uh, the topic is on the screen. The topic is Jesus was born to save you. I'm talking about Jesus was born to save you. And the reason why I want to start with this scripture is because many people question our belief on celebration of Christmas. A lot of uh, uh, Christian denominations, I don't know whether they are Christians, but uh, let me say Christian, some department of Christian denominations or some religious denomination, let me put it that way because not every religion is a Christian. Not every religious body is a Christian. My brother, let me talk about what I'm talking about now. Okay, I'm not talking about transsexual <laughs> at this time. I'm talking about Jesus was born to save you. So let me talk about that one. Don't, don't try to move my mind from what I'm trying to talk about. So be patient and, talk, and listen to what I'm talking about. So those of you who question the believers of Jesus Christ celebrating the birth of Jesus, I'm speaking to you now. Okay? Listen, in the book of John chapter number 9 verse 13 down, John chapter 9 verse 13 down. They brought him who formerly was blind to the Pharisees. Now it was a Sabbath when Jesus made the day and opened his eyes. 15. Then the Pharisees also asked him again how he had received his sight. He said to, uh, he said to them, he put the on he put clay, sorry, he put clay on my eyes and washed, and I see. <laughs> Therefore, some of the Pharisees said, 
this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, how can, man, how can a man who was a sinner do such signs? And there was division among them. You see, there is, there, is, there is division. Some people say we don't celebrate Christmas. Some people say we celebrate Christmas. There's a division right there. And you know that where the, the Spirit of God is, there is no division. Hmm. So you can see where, why some people are creating that confusion about uh, we don't celebrate Christmas, Christmas is paganism, Christmas is satanic, and all kinds of interpretation. Because they don't have the Spirit of God. If you don't have the Spirit of God, you will not understand the meaning and the importance of celebrating Christmas. And you will always ascribe it to paganism. But to me, I celebrate Christmas to the glory of my Lord Jesus Christ. So let me continue to read. So verse number 16 says, Therefore, some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, How can a man who is, who is a sinner do such signs? And there was division among them. Verse 17 says, They said to the blind man, Again, what do you say about him? Because he opened your eyes. He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him who had received his sight. Hello. God richly bless you for joining. Verse 19 says, I'm reading the book of John chapter 9. Now I'm on verse 19. And verse 19 says, And they asked them, they are asking the parents of the blind man, saying, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he, how then does he now see? And then verse 20, His parents answered them and, and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. Verse 21, but by what means he was, by, by what means he now sees, we do not know. Or who opened his eyes, we do not know. He is of age, he is a mature person, he is an adult. Ask him, he will speak for himself. <laughs> 22 says, his parents said, said these things because they feared the Jews for the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was Christ, he will be put out of the synagogue. Then verse 23 says, Therefore his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. Ask the, the boy himself. And then verse 24 says, So they again called the man who was blind. And said to him, give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. Verse 25. He answered and said, whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know that though I was blind, now I see. Hallelujah. So that's, that is verse number 24. Listen, whether Jesus Christ was born on the 25th of December or he was born on January or he was born on September 25th or whether Jesus Christ was born on July 25th, what I know is that why I was yes, uh, why we were yet sinners, Christ died for our sins. Why we were yet sinners, for God so loved the world. So he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. So whoever believed on his name should never or should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then he went to his own. Jesus Christ was born a Jew in Jerusalem, Bethlehem. So he, 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 he was born to his own people, but his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, 
He gave them power. Listen, he gave them power to become children and uh, sons and daughters of God. That is what I'm talking about. So, whether you believe Christmas or you don't believe, you don't believe Christmas, that will not change the birth of Jesus Christ. Whether you believe Jesus Christ's birth should be celebrated on 25th December or not, that will not change the salvation that God has given to mankind. You understand? Your belief will never change the salvation that God has for me. Your belief not celebrating Christmas will never give me passports to heaven. And me celebrating Christmas is not any way a passport for anybody, but it's a joy in my heart. It's a joy in my heart. It's a way that God used to bring people, families, friends together. Even it's a way God used to bring enemies together with us. So let me begin to give you some of these points I have jotted down and I want to share with you today. <clears throat> so this is the accounts of Jesus Christ, the birth of Jesus Christ in the book of Luke, chapter number one, verse 26. To at least verse number 34 which says now after those days his wife Elizabeth now is that what I'm reading no verse 26 sorry now in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city called Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And then, verse 28, And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Verse 29 of Luke chapter 1. But when she sought him, when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greetings this was. Verse 30. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Verse 31. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Verse 34, then Mary answered and said, how can this be since I do not know a man? And then the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Amen. So, now I'm going to start with my points. My points or my information about Christmas so the topic I'm talking about is that Jesus was born to save you so let's see what entails about the birth of Jesus Christ some of the good news surrounding the birth of Jesus Christ and at least I'm going to give you about uh, about a uh, five to six information surrounding about the birth of Jesus. So bear with me and just be patient with me. And I want you to get your pen and paper down and write this, some of this information I'm going to give to you. They are very, very interesting. You will like them. You will like them. So, let me start from the top here on my list. 
about these informations about these informations number one information about the christmas or about christmas amen god bless you prophet number one information you need to know about the birth and the celebration of christmas is that there is nothing more to think when it comes to Christ, Christmas. Let's say Christmas. Somebody say Christmas. And I say yes. Whether you call it Christmas or Christmas, I don't care. <laughs> like, the, like the blind man. All I know is that I was a sinner. And God sent his angels to prophesy to the Virgin Mary that he was going to be or she was going to give birth to a son and named him Jesus, who will be the savior of mankind. So when it comes to Christmas, there is nothing more to think on that particular day than the love of my Lord Jesus Christ for all of us. What a deep love. Hallelujah. What a deep love. So today, there is nothing. If there is strife, forget about it. If you have any query, query with someone, forget about it. If you hate someone, forget about it. If anyone has done anything against you, forget about it. If you are stressed, forget about the stress, depression, throw it away. Sisters and brothers, there is one thing important for you to think about today. And that is the love of Jesus Christ for all mankind. The deep love that Jesus has for every one of us. That love goes beyond your sins. The love of God for me and you go beyond our sins. Now, let me show you certain information you need about the birth of Jesus Christ. Is that, let me tell you, that is point number two. You know, some people live their life all they all their life they live they live it in hatred there are some people like in like some people in america like some some white men in america they live a life of hatred hatred okay they hate they hate blacks they hate blacks and some people not just blacks they they, they have that kind of hatred hatred uh, spirit in them they live their their life with with a life of hating people till the day they will die. They don't care. But let me tell you, Jesus showed life to his death. This is the man who came to this world. And he showed love to the day or to, to the final hours, minutes, and seconds he was dead. Love was part of him. Love was part of him. So Christmas is all about love. You understand? Christmas is all about love. So, while some people show hatred till they die, our Lord Jesus Christ showed love. He showed love till he died. Till the last minute he died, he was still showing love. Even when he was being stoned to death, he still loved. He said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. That is love. That is love. How many of us can show that love to our friends, to our brothers, to our sisters, to, to, to the people who have done something, something wrong to us? But Jesus is the only one. And that is why it's important and we have the need to remember this man and, and at least once in one day in a year. So I don't care your belief. I don't care what your pastor has taught you about Christmas celebration. All that I know is that I was a sinner and God sent his only begotten son one day. He was born one day. He was born one day. Whether that day was 25th or September or July of uh, 22nd or 1st or 5th or 7th. That is not important. What is important is that Jesus Christ came to save mankind. Ah, do you understand that point? That point clear to you? Jesus was born to save sinners. That is period. So Christmas 
was a constant time or, uh, that changed, uh, that, that brought about Christmas and all that stupid questions and controversies that you are giving out there is not important. What is important is that I was a sinner. We were sinners. And one day, God sent his only begotten son. And so whoever believed on his name should not perish but have everlasting life. So I recommend Jesus to you. I preach Jesus to you. That today if you receive Jesus Christ, you will never lose. Or you're not going to, 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 to lose your salvation. But you will have eternal life. Hallelujah. How many of you need eternal life? Listen, listen, one information from the scripture reading from the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 33, listen to verse number 33, verse number 33 of the book of Luke chapter 1 says, And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. So this man was born to give eternal life. Jesus, so, so Christmas is all about uh, remembering the day God gave his, his only begotten son to give us eternal life. Do we live eternally? Do we live eternally? We don't live eternally. We live up to 70 years. Some people live up to 30 years, they die. 20 years, they die. 30 years, they die. So God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for us to remove the, the, the nature of sin that makes people die so that we can live eternally because this is the man the angel said, the boy or the son that you're going to be giving birth to, he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. Listen to that word again. That word means Forever. Forever means eternally. And then he continued to explain forever where he says that and his kingdom there will be no end. Look at that. It's not going to be from 2017 to uh, 2018 to uh, 2020. No. It's not four year term of political party or political government. Okay. So this is what we celebrate. We celebrate the joy of what God has done for sinners. We celebrate how God has delivered us from the hands of the enemy, from, from prisons of Satan. We celebrate the freedom we have and, 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 and are moving our minds, our soul, our spirits, and our bodies hey, the way we want to do it by the grace of God. Nobody controls us. That is the meaning of Christmas. So, Oh, that was the second point of Christmas. The second point information about Christmas is that some people show hatred till they die, but our Lord Jesus Christ showed love till the day he died. If you don't like this, what, do you, what else do you want? What else do you want? Tell me now. Let's move on to point number three, information about Jesus Christ, the birth of Jesus Christ. Point number three, point number three, are you jotting them down? I welcome every one of you, Richard Holmes and uh, Lorita. So, listen, if you just join me, my topic today is that Jesus died to save you. Jesus died to save you. And I'm giving you more information about the, uh, the, the message surrounding the birth of Jesus Christ. I said... I, and I use the blind man that Jesus healed him one day as an introduction. This man said, well, whether Jesus was a sinner or he, he was a prophet or whatever you called him, all that I know is that I was a blind man and now I can see. So as for me and my family, all we know is that we were sinners and God sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to come and die for my sins. So, point number three. Point number three. Christmas is all about showing love. You see where we are going. Christmas is all about showing love to someone. Hallelujah. Christmas is not a time to go and argue with somebody and ask unnecessary and stupid questions like, 
why do we celebrate Christmas? Where is it? where is in the Bible that say we should celebrate Christmas? And let me let me let me give you one more information. Those people that tell you why do we celebrate Christmas? Do you know that they don't have a single proof? They don't have a single scripture that proof say that Christians or we shouldn't celebrate Christmas. The word Christmas is not in the Bible for them to prove to you that the Bible says we shouldn't celebrate Christmas. They use fallacy. They use false impression to, 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 to just confuse people, to just argue with people. You understand? They don't have any solid basis to prove that we shouldn't celebrate Christmas. But I'm just giving you information and the reason and the important why Christmas is necessary. Now, point number three I'm, I'm saying is that Christmas is all about showing love to someone. Whether that person is born in a village, whether that person is a rich man, whether that person is educated or uneducated, illiterate, illiterate person, whether that person is a white man or black man, whether that person is single or married, whether that person have children or don't have children, whether that person have money or that person is poor, whether that person live in good condition or in bad condition, Christmas is all about showing love to somebody. And let me tell you, if you can show such a love to somebody, don't separate us from the love of God. <laughs> I say, if you can't, Show love to somebody that God has sent his only begotten son to save. Don't separate that person from the love of God. Because that is all about Christmas. Christmas is all about showing love, my brothers and sisters. So I don't know what you are thinking and what you are doing today. But today, one thing I did is I, I started from like 12 a.m. sending messages, calling people, friends and neighbors, Wishing them a Merry Christmas, showing my love to them. Even those, those that I haven't talked to them throughout the year, this is the day I, 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 that gave me the opportunity to call them and, and wish them a, a, a wonderful day, a wonderful day of the year. You see, some people I call them, they, hey, some people will say, hey, where they are, baby, I'm a die, I'm a cock, I'm a you. Hey, Pastor Nenedi, you are me. You see, that is all about Christmas. That is all about Christmas. Don't think about anything. Don't worry yourself about people who are confusing you with all kinds of uh, uh, teachings and theories about Christmas. It doesn't matter. Let me show you one more scripture from the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 17. In the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse number 17. Listen to this. Listen to this scripture. Very wonderful and beautiful. Decorated scripture that you need to know i say very wonderful beautiful and decorated scripture from the book of colossians chapter 3 verse number 17 he says that and whatever you do in word or deed do all in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to god the father through him whatever you do in deed or word or word or deed what so if you are celebrating celebrating Christmas, God or Paul is telling you, Paul, the servant and the apostle of Jesus Christ says, do it through Jesus Christ to the glory of God, not to the idol idols, not to the ancestors, not to the spiritual world. We are doing it through Jesus Christ to the glory of God. That is why we celebrate Christmas. And that's how we show our love to someone. We show love. So today, if you haven't shown love, yet shown love to somebody, I want you to call somebody. Somebody that you think that hates you, I want you to call that person and say, Sister, brother, how are you doing? I just want to wish you uh, well by a year today, by the grace of God. I just want to offer a simple prayer of protection for you so that you will live to another year by this time. Hallelujah. This is all about Christmas. That is point number three. So let me just quickly go back 
and then remind you of uh, my points. So I said point number one, point number one, I'm going back, then I'll continue point number four. Point number one, there is nothing more to think of or to think on Christmas day than the love of my Lord Jesus Christ for us all. Deep love, think about it. Let's move on to the second point. The second point of information about Christmas is that some people show hatred till they die. Jesus show love till he died. That is point number two. So you need to think about that too. Now, point number three says, point number three says, Christmas is all about showing love to someone. If you can show love, don't separate us. Very wonderful thing. Interesting, isn't it? Yes. Let's move on to point number four. Point number four. Listen to this one. Very important. Christmas is all about joy and happiness of friends or with friends and families. A time to solve problems with even our enemies. Listen one more time. Point number four. Christmas is all about joy and happiness with friends and families. A time to solve problems with even our enemies. So, is it something wrong to celebrate Christmas to show love with friends and families and even to solve problems with our enemies? Bring friends together. Bring your enemy around you. Or just go closer to your enemy and show love. That is all about Christmas. That is why Jesus Christ came. And there is nothing else. So if I set a day aside and I'm doing this, which part of the Bible from the book of Genesis to Revelation that is against this statement? Which Show me which verse, which quotation from the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, that is against me showing or showing love, joy, happiness with friends and families, a time to solve problem with even an enemy. What do you think man can do best than this? There is nothing that man can do best than to show love to an enemy and to show love to friends and families and solve problems that are between us. If we can solve the problems we have between ourselves, I'm telling you, this world will be a happy place for us to live. This place, our families, our, our marriages will be a happy place to live. I'm telling you, sisters and brothers, can you please share the page for me so that somebody will hear this wonderful message? God richly bless you. So. When you talk about Christmas, it's all about Jesus Christ died to save you. It's all about the death of Jesus to save you. He was born to save you. Hallelujah. Jesus was born to save you. That is the purpose of the birth of Jesus, to save sinners from our sins. So when we read the book of Romans chapter number 5, we can read it from verse number 1 to uh, verse number eight, the book of Romans. It's very interesting scripture. Let me read quick, 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 quick. The book of Romans chapter five. Let me read quick, quick. He says that, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are being justified by faith. Therefore, we have peace. You see, justification is that, it's like you are standing in, 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 in a court of justice and you have everything shows that you are you are already condemned and you are just waiting for your your sentence to be crucified or to, to, to die you are just waiting for your sentence from the judge okay and all of a sudden the judge came and opened his files and he said that I set you free today in the name I set you free with my authority as a judge, I set you free. That's what Jesus Christ came to do for sinners. We were about to be crucified or to be condemned. We were about to be taken to condemn, condemnation. And all of a sudden, Jesus showed up. He showed up and says that, oh yes, I am standing in his place. I am replacing him. 
I want to take his death. Oh, Jesus, you are wonderful. Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are kind. Lord, you are so wonderful. My Lord, you are excellent. Point number five. Point number five. Let's go to point number five. Point number five of information about the celebration of Christmas Day is that Christmas is heavenly gift of eternal life. Hallelujah. I say Christmas is heavenly gift of eternal life. Christmas is a gift of eternal life. It's a gift of eternal life. If you don't want the gift of eternal life, you don't want the gift of eternal life. I don't know what else do you need. Like I said before, we live to die. But when Jesus appeared again, men will not die again. Men will live forever. When Jesus Christ appeared again, he has already crushed the power of death in Hades, in hell. So when he, when, when he died, he descended or ascended to, to hell and he took hold of the keys of Satan and they could not, death could not hold him in hell. Why? It look like my, okay, I guess it's working. It look like, um, it's my, it's my, Internet working, it looks like it's uh, jammed. Something is jammed. I, I can't see it way, but uh, let's continue. Facebook, uh, do you see me moving, going? The, is, is, is it working?